Garifuna Drum Making, hosted by myself, Afro Lambe, featuring Glenn Q. Garcia as the Garifuna Artisan. This project is possible thanks to a grant from the California Arts Council and the initiative from Gafu Inc. to document Garifuna drum making, which is unique to the Central American Garifuna region and is also shared by the Arawak culture in the Orinoco region of South America. Myself, Afra Lambe, will be asking Mr. Glenn Q. Garcia questions that pertain to what kind of wood is utilized to make better drums, what kind of skin, how to tune it, and how to maintain the quality sound of the drum. Okay, so please go ahead and tell us, what's your full name? Where were you born? Well, my full name is Glenn Garcia, born in Belize by way of Orange Walk. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. And your parents? My parents are Eleanor Flores and Alan Garcia from CN Bike and Georgetown. CN Bike and Georgetown, very key, key towns. Yes. Um, talk to us a little bit about the enchantment with the guard from the drum. Where did that start? Well, it started back in, I want to say, late, early 90s. Um, back in the days when well, I came here as a youth, since I was about 15. So that would make me 1992, around that kind of time. I went to to a party and there was a band rehearsing so the band used to call uh, Wagia with Bootsy Rankin, General Lee, Baho and then they were rehearsing so I picked up one of their Garifuna drums and General Lee, Lee was like um, that also you play this thing, play like this so I started practicing like that and he's like um, you know what take the drum home and practice Wow. that's how I got, got my start and that was here in, Bel right in Belize here, or right here in LA? Wow. Right in LA. Sure. before that in LA in Belize there was no drumming, I was just a youth growing up in Georgetown, go to the river, be in Madalaga. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Right, so basically that's how I got my So stuff. you heard the drumming in Belize, but it never no, dawned on you that it was not, not until you in came to LA. Well, here in LA, I started listening to the music and hearing the drums. I don't know if you're shocked as I am, but I can't believe that. That's outstanding. Wow. A little bit of history about how this thing started. It's basically, there is no teacher. Nobody can come and say, you know what, I teach Kyo to play this drum, or I teach how to fix this, or not, nothing like that. It's all self-taught, basically. That's how I started. Wow. You know? That means no one sat and, and showed you how to knock it. Never. No one, you didn't take any type of classes. Never. You just heard it based on your ear. Yes, ma'am. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. I am like, I am just amazed by that. Hi, Mr. Glenn Q. Garcia. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the guard from the drum artisan. I have a few questions with regard to the making of the drum. Can you tell us about the materials that are needed to build the garth on a drum? Yes, I can. So first of all, we start with a hollowed out tree trunk. In this case, this is a actually an African drum, and it's a dundun from Africa. Right? And then it's actually about 24 inches long, so to kind of make it to the garth on a drum size, so I kind of cut it down to start with. And then from there, we would go to the, the skin, right? which is goat skin, that's what we use here, which is this right here. That's that. Um, this right here is it's not really ready to put on the drum yet, so we have to shave it off to start with and then soak it in water for it to, to fit on the drum. And then we need the rims for the drum, right? These are these are bamboo, right? And then it's pre-shaped of course, right? And then from there we will go to this the rope. Just not the basic nylon rope. That's what goes on there. So to, to recap, real what after I question was is what materials are needed to, to, to make a garrison drum, which is the body of the drum, right? This is the shell. You need the skin, the goat skin. Um, to prepare that, basically I have to shave it and then soak it in water for it to get kind of supple to put it on. You do need the rim. There's two rims, one on the top, one on the bottom. Uh, you need the nylon rope to, to tune the drum. And after that, to tune the drum, you need the pegs. Right? It's about eight of these. Eight. You need eight of those. Once it's tuned and dried and ready to go, you put the nylon string on top, or usually it's a uh, steel wire to, to, to give it the fine tune, the final touch. Thank you so much for sharing that with regards to the necessities to uh, build a drum. So talk to us. I know you mentioned about the tuning. What does it take for the preservation? I know you can't tune it every day. Right. It might annoy their neighbors. Ah. So talk to us a little bit about that. So once you're tuned, you're done tuning your drum and you're playing and at the end of the night you'll be like, you know, I'm done playing. So basically you would um, take the pins up, right? So basically this is already set and ready to play. So once I'm done, I get home, pull the string, pull the pins back like one at a time. 
right? And you're going to hear how it sounds different once you pull the beats back, okay? Alright? There's eight, like I said before, so you just go one at a time. And they all get loose. And that's that. And then you just leave it like it is till you're ready to play again and you tune it back. And when you tune it back, you would just turn the turn the Well it's different. When you tune it back, you kinda of wanna go one in, one out. So, so instead of go one, 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 you'll go you do this one, skip one, and then go to another one. Alright? And so on. Skip one, tighten another one. And so on, right? Skip one, real quick, and you'll get back the sound you're looking for. Okay? So basically that's pretty much how you see. Yay! Alright, I'm excited. Right. Okay, Mr. Glenn Q. Garcia. Yes, ma'am. Let's talk a little bit more about the drums. I know that there is a primera and there's a segundo, so talk to us about the differences between the two. Sure. Um, well, the first of all, the primera is mostly what we call the talking drum. Right? It's like more like the lead. Right? It does all the talking, all the rhythm, all the. You know, you're from the leg right? Right. The, the, the beat. And right, then the segunda is mostly like a like a kick drum or, or a bass. Like it just has that boop, 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 and then that kind of helps with the, the rhythm too. All right, back to your question now, as far as the primera and the segunda. The difference is the segunda is actually always bigger than the primera because it is a, a bass, right? And it does have a heavier sound, right? So this is a, right? No, that's just a, right? That's a, more like a segunda sound, which is always a little bit heavier, but that's a smaller segunda. And then, that's a Primero. Alright? So, now, we know about the Primero, we know about the Segundo. Let's talk a little bit more about the money part. Right. Is there a difference in the price? Of course. Um, Primero is a little bit cheaper than, than, than the Segundo. Not much cheaper, but it is a lot more work to do a Primero as opposed to a Segundo. To make the loop, right, it is kind of hard work. You got to get that a little bit smaller. For the big one, it's, it's not that much to get it circular. Right, and the skin is smaller, the skin is bigger, the shell is bigger, the shell is smaller. So as far as pricing, if you, let's say you want to buy one, one segundo, you're looking at about 400 bucks. If you want to buy one of these, you're looking at about 300 bucks. For the pair, if you buy it together, maybe 650, 600, more or less. That's funny. I thought that the Primera was going to be more because it does more. But you say you learn when you learn, right? Right, right. So correct, standard. correct. But it's more material, more money. Wow, wow. <laughs> Right? Um, one more thing is, let's say, if you do have a drum and you want it fixed, you can call me or call Afra or contact Gafu and we'll get it fixed for you. Of course, for a fee. What, ha what happens if we decide we want to build one ourselves? Because you've given us all the tools and tell us what to do. Where can uh, we get it? Uh, I prefer you contact. <laughs> okay, well, with all this great information, I want to know, what happens if I want to build one myself? Where can well, I buy these materials? Well, first, you maybe want to buy a plane ticket, go to these and buy a drum I already made. Oh my God! Right? Hey, or you can call me and I'll tell you exactly where to get it from, where I can make it for you. And everything is actually here in the U.S. So, the skin, the drum, everything is here. Call me and I'll tell you. Sounds good. And so now, we'll be taking questions from the audience. And our first question, Mr. Glenn Q. Garcia, is what type of wood are the Garfin and drums made out of? Well, to the best of my knowledge, as far as I know, they've been using uh, mahogany, cedar, and some people use mango tree, as far as I know, for the, for the drum body, the shell. All right? Okay. And what about the skin itself? Well, here in the U.S., we use mostly goat skin, right? sheep skin. And then in Belize, I've heard them using, um, what's the skin called, uh, deer skin. Some people use young calf, and I think, uh, what else? And they use sheep skin too. Right, so goat, uh, deer, and some, some people they say they use tiger skin, but don't use tiger skin because I want to fight, I say you don't play the drum, right? So. Wow. <laughs> Is there like I a hear. difference with the sound of the, of the skin, with uh, the skin that you use? Yeah. It is? Goat skin is, is thinner, so it gives you a more, more crisp, crisp, crisp sound, which that. is mostly used in Honduras. Wow. Right? That's why it sounds a whole, to me it sounds a lot better. With the goat skin, uh, not the goat, the deer skin is kind of thick. So you kind of have to tune it a lot more to get that sound you want. Mm -hmm. Some people use pelican chuck, they, they call it the yellow, right? Which is real thin, but sounds good. 
So I've heard Mr. Glancio Garcia about the synthetic skin with, with, that have been used on the drums. So can you talk to us a little bit more about that? Sure, of course. Um, I've heard of it, but personally I wouldn't use it on my drum because I wouldn't know how to use it or what to do with it. Whatever. So like I was saying, the uh, synthetic drum skin, uh, I've never bought it, but I've actually bought a drum with synthetic skin on it that I used before for, for playing the very final drum in, in the bands. Now, we also had a gentleman inquire on the drums themselves. We have a Primero, we have a Segundo, and I think that he, he mentioned that there could be a third one as well. It's called a Tercera, or in, in our terms, La Nigi, which is a Segunda, but just bigger, like two times bigger than a regular Segunda. And that's like a heartbeat drum. And it's mostly used in the temples for, for what we call the good. So you mentioned the need or the use of the tercera in the Dugu. Can you talk to us a little bit more about the, its usage? Personally, I've never been to a Dugu or, or know what really a Dugu is all about. But we've done what they call Dugu here in LA, which is a, according to what I've heard, is a mini version of a Dugu, which is a spiritual thing. Enough place for that, but we only use two drums: Primero and the Segunda. For this next question, we have a member of our audience, Mr. Alfonso Cayetano, who will be asking the question. The Segunda in the past, we have also used these big tape buckets uh, for drumming purpose in our Beluria. So, hence, I'm asking if we cannot expand the usage of those. Ordinary Personally, I've used the pigtail bucket myself, right? But it's hard on the hands as, as a drummer. The pigtail bucket you know, has a, like a, a rim on the outside that's kind of hard, and then you can't tune it, <laughs> right? So basically, you use it like it is. So, okay, so now I guess we're getting ready to make an actual drum, right? So first thing we start is with the skin that's already pre-soaked from. Yesterday, right? Here's your skin, right? and you actually lay it out like that. You take your rim, you put it on there. Right? So this rim is the bottom rim. There's two ribs, one on the top, one on the bottom. And then all you do is you fold it, right? You start folding it like that, and then you have to tack it on. Right? So you start tacking it on, and basically you turn it around like that. Start to tack it on there. Tack. Now be careful because these things are pretty sharp. Ready? That one. And this should be tight on the rim. The hair on the skin, you can always shave it off when it, when, once it dries up. Right. That, just keep going all the way around. Let's get that in there. Done putting all the tacks in there. As I'm looking at you going through this, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm kind of asking myself, like, I wonder if there's a machine that does it. This has to be handmade, huh? Correct, all the way, 100% handmade. From scratch, everything. You know? Now, if you notice, I have all this excess skin. Right? I mean, I did pre-measure before I actually cut the skin. But you always want to have, like they say, measure twice, cut once. That's the same thing here. You don't want to cut the skin and it's too short, then you, you just kind of wasted your whole 
materials on there. Okay. Um, the the thump, the tacks that I put in there is at least like two inches apart. Well, as I'm folding it, you, you can see where you need to put a tack in there, so so it doesn't come back up. And the tack is just to hold the skin down so when it dries up it stays in that form. Alright? Okay, so after you're done and you said you have to leave the skin to dry, mm -hmm. how long does that take before it's dry? At least two weeks for it to be fully dry and cured. And then you don't want to leave it out in the sun. You want to leave it to dry like at room temperature. From past experience, some of us musicians or drummers, like to be in a hurry and we need a drum to go play and then it starts to rip if you dry it too fast and leave it in the sun and when it rips you can't just like mend it or anything you have to put a brand new skin take it off put a new skin as you can see i'm done here with all this packing up i'm going to cut the excess skin on there so you got to be kind of careful not to cut too much or else you won't fit right all right so there's that I'm going to go a little bit outside, like about there. Okay. I'm cutting it off. So whatever is left on there is going to go under the drum. Alright. Okay. So that's that. So it's good to have extra. Just be on the safe side. Sometimes if it doesn't quite fit like how you expect, you turn it over or put it on there, right? Just so you make sure that it does fit. Right? So as you can see, it's, it's going to fit, right? So you just lift it back up. And then now we're going to put it on the top rim, right? So it's already pre-sized from before, right? And then we get the rope and we start stringing it up. Right? There's, we have our string, right? Um, while we're looping it, we have to kind of burn the edges so it doesn't come apart, right? So, that's that. Okay. So the string stays together at the, at the end. Right. So you're stealing it? Basically, yeah. Right. So once you're looping it through, it, it kind of stays together on there. Alrighty, so there's that, and then we're ready to go. Alright, so we're going to start stringing it up. If you notice over here, there's three holes, alright? This is the last hole that the string is going to come through. So on, on the left side of it is where you put the string, alright? So let's get that, alright? So I'm going to go through here, and you're going to go on the rim. Right. You keep pulling it, go back in and, and out. Right. Same thing again. So you're going to end up with eight of these. Alright. Pull it right Pull the right one. Yeah. So we pull this one, you get that one, you get that, you get that. So on. So, once you get that up, set it back up, turn it around so you can see it. You need some more rope. Okay. Enough rope. At the 
end of looping the entire drum and this is the last hole and then remember it has 17 holes the last hole is where the end of the string comes out from right? and this is the one that you pretty much tie up like that and, and that's that okay do that one more time do that knot one more time so once it comes out you kind of tie it up on the, on the, on the last one right? you tie it up you're gonna still have to loosen it once you, once you kind of get to where, you, where you're going. All right, so remember I started on the inside. On this one, right? So we have to cut this off and tie it so it doesn't come up to, to the other side. All right, that. So you basically take this, tie it, and then you burn it again. Burn it so it doesn't come through. Alright, so I gotta go on that side and then start to tighten it up. So once Three. I once I get out my string all the way in, I have to put a little bit more manpower in it and start to tighten it down so it so it kind of looks like a drum. Alright, so to get this rim to fit on here, you basically have to pull the strings a little bit tighter. Right? So you'll have a, a, a little bit of extra, excess, excess rope to start with. Right? You kind of put a pressure on it with your knees so you know where the rim sets. Kind of, kind of, you can move them. Again, back to the, the last rope, same thing. And that's that. Now you get the pegs. So the excess skin, I'm trying to push it so it stays under the rim. Right? So we don't have any excess skin hanging out from the side of the rim because it, it does belong under the rim. So I just kind of use a screwdriver to push it back in there, whatever is left. Right? So if you can see, it's all even. It's all the skin is under the rim. So, see? So we're good with that. All right, so now we're ready to put the pins in. Right? And the pins are basically the same materials that the rim is made of, which is bamboo. Right? Um, it's just like when you first use in the drum, it's the same technique to put the pins in, one in, one out. Uh, but it is a new skin, so you kind of have to watch how you put the pegs in, so the rim doesn't kind of want to lean on one side. Right? So we'll start by just putting them in first. Right? So it catches. Right. Stay. That one. Yeah. Keep going around. Just want a little tension on it to start. And we can more or less bring it, start to bring it down to where you want it to go. in. Now the, I, the trick is to make sure that the, it goes all the way down evenly. Right? So if you can look at it, um, some parts are higher than others. Right? So you want to pull the peg down on a side that's a little bit higher. Right? So in this case it would be this one. Right? So, and if you 
good, it's going to go down. Yeah? It's going to fall down on it. And the only reason it's pulling down is because the skin is wet. Pretty much, once you get a good level, you leave it there and in about two weeks, you're good to go. So there you have it, brand new drum made by Glenn Q. Garcia, and we're all ready to go. Thanks. I want to say thanks to Gafo, um, Cheryl, and, and Ronnie, DJ Labuga, for this opportunity to come and show how we make the Gary Finnett drums. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Clavia Santos, originally from PG Punta Gorda. That's where we got this name, PG Hall Cultural Center. And I'm, the, I don't like to say the word the owner, but I'm the manager and I believe that God is the head and he gives me what I need to make this facility available for all of us. When, I see, when we say culture, I'm not only speaking of Garifuna, but I'm talking about all the different, different ethnic groups that we have in Belize and I guess throughout the world. It's always a pleasure to have everybody here no matter where you come from. Thank you. Okay. Now we'll get a little bit of feedback from our audience. Let's talk to Mr. Cayetano from Barranco. This was a well, it was an excellent workshop. Um, knowing that more and more people are not making drums, I like that Gafu is taking initiative to teach all of us not to forget these kids. And now, Dr. Goldwasser from UC San Diego. This is one of the most important things that I think Gafu is doing. And docu by documenting the traditions, the cultural traditions, especially the ones that the Griffna people themselves want to continue and, and preserve their culture through continuing them. But also putting them on YouTube. Scholars are now finding that a lot of cultures are being preserved and even reemerged via people watching YouTube, learning how to do things of their own cultures that maybe have been lost for a generation or two. They go back, they start studying their culture, and they start not just changing themselves by enhancing that culture within themselves, but it spreads throughout the family. Very important for Griffna culture because family is all important. So once you get a few people in the Griffna community embracing making the drums, you're going to get extended families researching, talking to their elders, finding out the significance, and it's very significant, the importance of the drums themselves. Thank you. Thank you. And now, Mr. Bill Flores from the culture capital, Dangriga. Yes, I am. Uh, we just we just got through uh, the making of a good even the drum, which is which is a lost art. But Mr. Glenn Garcia, he did a good job, just explaining it, taking us through the steps of how to make the drum. So this is these are one of the things that will will guarantee that the culture survive beyond beyond our existence. So 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 things like this is what we need to document to make sure that we're around. Uh, even if the language is not around, this part of the culture will always remain because we'll always have a dance. That's that's our point of preservation right now. So if we if we so to do our dances, we must have the drum. To be true Garinu, we do have to use the drum because it's it's vital also for our spirituality. Because we don't Garinu don't do nothing without drums. When when a baby is born we play drums. When somebody dies, we play drums. Somebody get married, we play drums. It's our birthday, we play drums. We just play drums. You know, and that's how we send our messages. So I want to thank 
Garfield for this opportunity and for this instructional video. I am Bill Flores. Thank you.